This video is designed to help you to identify the problems affecting you right now in your environment because it is the single most underrated effect in health. Think of the energies of the environment acting like a dripping tap on you and that dripping tap can slowly fill things up or it can fill things up more quickly. How quickly it fills you up varies from person to person as does the variety of effects you can experience because you live in different places and you have different physiological balances in your body. The Europeans recognized that there were more deaths in certain houses than in others. They called these cancer houses, but nobody really knew why until 1929. In that year, a man called Freiherr Gustav von Pohl, who was a dowser, went to the small German town of Wilsbiburg. He wanted to test his theory that there was something in the earth which caused illness. He chose Wilsbiburg because there had been 54 deaths from cancer in the previous 10 years, making this small town amongst the worst for cancer deaths in the whole of Germany. The town only had about 3,300 people, but 42 of the houses had a history of seven deaths from cancer. Von Paul doused the town very carefully over a period of days with a police escort. He marked all the lines he found that were bad for humans on a map. On a separate map, the town's medical officer of health marked the locations of the previous 54 deaths. When the two were compared, all 54 deaths from cancer were directly on the lines that von Pohl had doused. In the following year, 1930, the Berlin Center for Cancer Research published these results, and that began the present interest and investigations into the links between disease and location. So this video guide has been made in order to help you to answer the question, is your house sick? Because if your house is sick, you will be too. So what follows is a guide to help you identify the major indicators. First, if there's been a history of illness in the house. Now, by itself, that's not enough. But if things have changed, and, for example, there's more illness since you moved to the place, then that's a clue. Also, if symptoms disappear when you're away from there, that's also a clue. Another clue is low-level illness in just one area or part of the body. Uh, for example, one client we had experienced continual problems in her head and neck areas, uh, but they all disappeared when her house was cleared because she'd been sleeping with her head on one of these noxious lines of energy. Uh, another indicator about illness is if the illnesses just don't respond to the usual medication in the way that they should. That can also be a sign that your house is sick. Children and animals are, can be very sensitive to these things, and their sensitivity, especially in children, can lead to, can lead to behavioral problems, um, can misbehavior of various kinds, but also, more commonly, a fear of going into a part of the house. Um, or they might report they've been talking to people, people you can't see, invisible people, things like that. Um, they're trying to tell you that they don't feel right about some areas, but they don't necessarily have the language to do this. Many schools in Europe, for example, make it a practice to regularly rotate their students around the classroom to avoid them remaining in such negative areas, because if you sit a student in such areas, it makes studying very, very difficult. Another common clue is if you are unable to rest or relax sleep at night. Uh, for example, you might be very tired, but sleep is difficult or disrupted. Uh, you might have nightmares, or you just might not feel rested at all when you wake up in the morning. Um, you might be able to sleep very well away from home, but not at all in your own bed. And that's a very good clue. Children, as I've said, can be very sensitive, and this is true, again, of sleep problems. Children can often be found scrunched up at one end of the bed or one side of the bed as if they're trying to get away from something, and in fact they are. They're, they're sensing that there's something which they don't like and is bad for them, and in their sleep they just move away from it. Your own reactions and feelings are also very important. Does the place you're living in, does it actually feel like a home to you? Do you actually want to move? Uh, do you feel fearful or depressed or discomforted there? How, how safe do you feel at night when you're alone? These are sorts of indicators which can tell you that the, there's something out of balance and that you're reacting to it in some fashion. 
Other living things can also indicate problems in your energetic environment. Plants, trees, etc. are very susceptible to negative earth energies. So, for example, look at the pictures we took on a visit to the UK. Uh, we doused there was a line of negative energy alongside this path. And you can see this line of trees with the growths on them. And nearby there are perfectly healthy trees. The line crossed the path as we walked along it, and you could find where it crossed quite easily by looking at the hedge, as you can see here, which also has malformed growth. However, it's important to realize that what is bad for us humans is not bad for everything living. In fact, some living things thrive in areas which are bad for humans. For example, ants' nests are usually found along these lines. The following lists will give you just a few examples of what grows well in areas which are bad for us and what is weakened by energy which weakens us. So just look at these and compare it to your own experiences and do bear in mind this is just a, a fairly limited list. Another modern contributing factor to sick houses is the man-made problem, particularly electromagnetic fields. But there's also just this sea of electromagnetic energy which we live in. It's been increasing regularly. This, this is all affecting us and it can build and build and build. So it starts out fairly okay, but if you're in, in it all the time and you're particularly susceptible, you will get effects from it. Um, microwaves are a great example of this. Um, cell phone towers were beaming, beaming out microwaves. They used to be very simple to identify, but as you can see from these pictures here, what look like ordinary trees are in fact cell phone towers which have been disguised. Lastly, there is the group of problems which we can roughly lump together as paranormal phenomena. For example, you might go to a place and suddenly you feel cold in that area. It's, it's as if the temperature has dropped several degrees in just that one area. There's no explanation for it, there's no drafts, nothing obvious, but nevertheless there's a temperature drop. And the same thing can happen with smells, strange smells, usually bad smells as well, for no particular reason, and they don't necessarily last, they come and they go. These are usually good indications. Another one is of apparitions. Now, I'm not talking of, uh, of ghosts that come into the room and stand by the side of you. Usually, the apparitions which people report are ones which they see out of the corner of their eye. They just see movement, perhaps, or they just see like a shadow, perhaps, and it just seems to move. Th those are the sorts of, of, of low-level, if you like, low-level effects which people talk about. Another one is a feeling of being watched, particularly at night. Some of our clients, for example, have reported seeing red eyes staring at them when they wake at night, and that's just the way they interpret the particular energy there. Um, children, of course, are particularly sensitive to the, these problems, and they will tell you in whatever fashion they can that things are not right. There's a monster in the cupboard or um, something under the bed, or there are things here which need that they're in the wrong place or they're asking to go. They don't have the language necessarily to, to make it clear, but please take what they say with some measure of seriousness because they are very receptive to what's going on. So briefly, again, the list of eight factors are shown here. Now, if you want to ask questions, or if you just want to share your experiences, or if you just want to find out more, then visit this website.